Hello and welcome and in this tutorial we're going to be creating a graphic that is used on a screen. In our case it's going to be a hotel uh, convention center type situation uh, but the dimensions and everything else we work with on this project could be used for video as well. So to get to it we are actually going to be using photopia.com and if you look up here you can go there and it is very very similar to Photoshop. It is free and uh, it runs in your browser as well so this should run on most computers and for what we're doing it has all the tools that we need and you'll be surprised how powerful it is uh, when you sit next to Photoshop and uh, I use Photoshop all the time but um, I have a lot of students who don't have it and so this is our next best thing to work with and so we need to start off with a new document and um, once you're here and it's initialized, you'll notice there's some ads over here. Sorry, uh, I think that's how they pay for this, but you can create an account as well. And if you want to pay for it, um, it's not that expensive, but in all reality, you don't need to. And you don't need to create a login either because we could save all of these documents as a PSD or Photoshop document. So we're going to start off with a new document and just so we uh, get this out of the way, this is what we're going to be building. And so this would go up on a screen when you're walking down a hallway to say what's inside um, a conference room at a hotel or a convention center. But the, the sizes that we're going to work with and everything else could be used even for video uh, or anything else like say a menu board or any other delivery method that uses images. So we will be creating, um, in terms of design, a real simple one, but this could be reused over and over again. So this is what our final product will look like. And I will provide a PSD file as well for you to download if you want to look at the final. But I really do suggest that um, if this is your first time working with a graphics program, I'm going to keep it very simple, but you'll also probably uh, stumble here and there so that's why I'm doing this in a video you can go back and watch it again and see what I click on but if you know a little bit about let's say Photoshop already or another editing program uh, be creative with this um, you don't have to do exactly what I do um, you can use different fonts you can use uh, different backgrounds but if you're this is your first time just follow along with me that's all we're looking for here is to get your feet wet and to show you that there is more to um, creating images and just taking them. Uh, we can build up and all the things here we are pretty much built in except for this image and this is just something I pulled offline real quick to drop in off Wikipedia. So I'll have this file but we're going to start file and we're going to do new. And you can see we can export all these tools are here but we're going to do a brand new document and we do file new. We get a project name up here, so let's call this, um, uh, I'll just call it Hotel. Just keep it simple. You'll notice the default size is 1920 by 1080 pixels. So we count everything on the screen in pixels. And high definition 1080p, which is what most of you probably watch television. Now you may have a 4K uh, television, but 1080p is what we're shooting for. 4K would be four times this. That's why the resolution is so high. But we're going to stick with 10, 1920 by 1080. So if we measured the screen, that's the size we would get in pixels. So if you have a big TV at home, in the end, if it's 1080p, uh, let's say a Blu-ray disc that you put in and watch, 4K is four times this size. We're going to stick with this one. DPI, we're going to work with 72. And DPI stands for dots per square inch. So it's very similar to pixels. It's the amount of pixels that are in a one inch by one inch area on your screen. So 72 is what we're going to work with. We don't need to go any higher on it. Uh, I don't worry, I'm not going to worry about the background, but you'll notice down here we have screen. You might be on social. And you might have something different up here. You can do Facebook event image, but we're going to click on screen and go to full HD. But you could see 2K, UHD, and 4K. So 4K is four times this when it's all said and done, you know, give or take. Um, but you could fit in technically four of these images. And that's a whole other lesson in itself. But we're sticking with full HD. <coughs> and we're going to start with an image over here. Um, so you're, you may only have with symbols. 
So these are the templates. You can see there's lots of templates to start with. So if you want to play with a different template, be my guest. Um, but I want one with a photo. I want something in the background. So I'm going to click on photo. And the one I'm looking for is the one with the cruise ships. Actually, I'm sorry, the one with... Uh, there it is. With some European city in the background. Any of these will work. Uh, you can even do the cat one if you want to. What are these? But it's a good way to start off with an image that you know you can use. So this is what I'm going to pick. And you'll notice when I click on it, it opens it up. And in this case, it did bring up template.psd because it overwrote my name. That's fine. So first thing we're going to do is we need to turn on a few tools to make our life easier. First of all, make sure you have the move tool selected. So it's a little arrow. Click on auto select and transform controls. You'll notice down here, look at the text. We now have what's called a bounding box on. If you turn off the transform controls, we can't scale these. Like I can't click on it and stretch it. With it on, I can click on it and stretch it. I don't want to. So one other command you're going to need to learn, step backwards, control Z or command Z on the Mac. So we turn both of those on. We're not going to save this right now. Uh, we're just going to work along, but you can, when you're ready, do save as PSD and it'll download it. We're going to do some export as well later on. That's how we save the file that you'll upload in the class or if you need it for something else. PSD files are great. They're Photoshop documents, but uh, sometimes we have to export into other formats, JPEG and PNG being the two uh, that we work with. So we have Hello World here. What a beautiful day. The text is here. I really don't need this stuff. So over here under our layers, we have Hello World. What a beautiful day. So each of these elements is broken down into its own layer. And then the layers all sit on top of each other. So I click and I move. You'll see it's above the image here. So I'm just clicking and holding and moving. It selects it as well. So we can hit delete on this. Down at the bottom, there is a delete button, or I can hit delete on the keyboard. I can do the same thing for that and the bar. So what I end up with is just the background once I hit delete on all of them. And you can see here there is a layer that's 25% opacity. There's a little eyeball here just to bring down the, the tint a little bit. I don't need that so I'm going to hit delete. So all I have left is really my background. So what I'm going to do now is grab my rectangle. So float over. We can draw different sizes. I'm going to select rectangle. And up at the top you get a shape, a fill, and if we want to a stroke on it, which we're not going to do. But I'm going to fill it with black. I haven't drawn anything yet. I'm just choosing the color I'm going to uh, use to fill it. Then I'm going to draw a bar that runs across the top here doesn't have to be perfect as long as you got a bar that's not down to here but kind of covers the top what is that eighth of the the layout so we get a black bar it's called shape one if you want to change the name you could double click on the name where it says shape one and call it let's call it black bar I like to name everything that way I know what I'm working on and so if I click on the little eyeball you'll see it disappears. So now we put in some text. So I'm going to grab my type tool and I'm going to make this white and then let's pick a font. What well, looks good here? Uh, now these are all web fonts. They're actually provided by Google 
And do we see something in here we like? Uh, I'm gonna go pretty plain with this. Uh, but I want something a little heavy. So, sans serif, there's lunch type. Hmm. I really don't know what I want here. And this is where you need to get a little creative. Some of these are a little too much, like that wouldn't work here. We wanna be professional as well. So, let's try lack. I kind of like that. Whoops. So I chose it. It'll load it, because you can see it has to load it up. And I'm going to click. I'm just going to click anywhere here. And I'm going to type out... Um, Uh, Rotterdam, Hilton, and Convention Center. If you triple click or click and drag on the text using the type tool, you can change it to regular or if they have a bold or something else. And then using my move tool, I'll move my type up. Now if your type's too big or too small, you can select it, change the font size. So I'm using the type tool. I'm triple clicking on the type and you can change the font size. Or you can type in a number too. I think I had 80, so let's try 85. It's a little too big. The other thing you can do is use the move tool. And remember you have to have the transform controls turned on and auto select. You can click on one corner. If you hold down the shift key, you can scale as well. But for most of you just using the type tool, triple clicking and changing the, let's say to 80. Will work. You'll notice my type was selected a line left, but you can do a line center and a line right if you want to as well. I'm just gonna get it in position here. And that looks good. Now you'll notice I have two type uh, layers. Earlier I think I clicked once somewhere up here. I can select it and hit the delete key on my keyboard and get rid of it as well. You can move the black bar as well. You'll notice a red line appears in the middle. That tells me it's centered. Just like my text. See that little red line that appears right in the middle? Right here. I'll bring it down a little. Looks good. You'll notice I'm off into way beyond what we call our trim. I like to do this because I apply I apply drop shadows and other things and strokes and I don't want it right against here. Right on the trim. I don't want this. You'll notice you can bring this in. I like to have this off a little bit. This is a personal preference and really a design preference for me. There we go. So playing with it. And if you ended up with your text behind, you can always drag and rearrange your layers as well. So if you double click on the little thumbnail here, you'll get your properties. There's info. It'll give you some information about it as well. If you want, you can expand this out. These are all of your, um, sorry about that, um, palettes and our tools for each of the things that we do. Sorry, I'm just changing my size just a little bit.
Down here at the bottom in my layers, you have link, EFF, and some other tools. We're not going to use all these, but we are going to use the EFF, and that's effects. So if you select your black bar and click on effects, EFF, these are things we could do to it. And so one of the cool things, we can put a pattern in the background here. So if I click on pattern overlay, it'll open up my dialog box. And you might get a different pattern, it's probably something like this, but you can see there's different patterns that we can apply. Now I want to keep it dark and black. There's an interesting one. But I think I'm going to go with the very first one here. And you can define new and bring others in if you want, but we're just going to work with what's here. And it might be a little tough to tell, but it's kind of like a brushed metal effect. And I like that. And then I want to add a stroke to this. So I want to have a stroke at the bottom of this. So if I click on the little checkbox on the stroke, right now it's black, but I can change the fill to white on the color picker. You can see it there and you can change the size. And it adds a stroke to my box. Then we can add a drop shadow. Now you'll notice you can't, it's a little tough to see but it is there. I can change the angle It'll make it a little bit better at 120, and I can change the distance. You can even change the size, make it a lot bigger, or bring it back down. And if you're not getting these tools and options, make sure after you checkbox, you click on the name, and then it will come up. So you'll see me do that over and over. But I like that. It's a nice, simple drop shadow. You know, I may bring the opacity down just a little bit. But it adds depth, and that's something, even just something as simple as this, adding some depth makes it pop. So a big difference in just having a black bar. Now we've got a really nice um, pattern in the background, and we added a quick stroke and put in the drop shadow. Now I want to show you if this was right up on the edge, look what happens with the stroke. It's on the edge of the object, so that's why I like to have my objects off a little bit so I can apply things like that. And I use these tools a lot. Oops. If you notice, I accidentally moved my image. So my background image is unlocked. What that means is I can move this. That's probably not what we want to do, right? So Control Z. And if I select my background here, I can lock all. Now I can't move it. So make sure it is locked. Might already be in. If not, now I have a little lock on there. And I'm ready to now move on to the body. Now I could put text right on top of this, but it'd probably be difficult to read it, the contrast between the two. So what we're going to do is grab our rectangle tool again. This time I'm going to fill it with white. And I'm going to draw a rectangle in the middle here. It doesn't have to be perfect right now, but you want to leave yourself a little bit of a margin all the way around. So see you have a little bit of a margin. I can position this on center, see how it snaps to center. Down here, though, I'll have to eyeball it a little bit. So that gives me a nice border all the way around. And you'll see my shape. I'm going to change it to white background. And up here under opacity, we're going to bring this down to about 50%. And you can see what happens with 50% transparency, it allows through the background. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the effects. I'm going to click on the layer style. I have my white background selected. And I'm going to put a stroke on this. Now right now the stroke is white. I'm going to make it black. And we'll make it about, oops, we've got to always hit OK. Make it about 10 points. 
11 is fine. Right. Close enough. One pixel is not going to make a difference. And positions on the inside. We don't want it on the outside. You get these little kind of rounded corners. You can do on center, but for this one, inside is fine. And I'm going to add the drop shadow too. So it adds a nice little drop shadow all the way around. It may not be popping out, but it's there. We'll hit OK. That gives me a nice effect around the edges too, doesn't it? So hopefully now you can see I can put text on top of here and I'll have a higher contrast. It'll be easier to read. And we can adjust this opacity too if I need to. It'll allow us to play with it later. So I'm going to leave it at 50 for the moment. I'm going to make sure my white background is selected or I click anywhere off. I'm using my move tool. I'm clicking anywhere off the edge. Nothing is selected. I'm going to grab my type tool and I'm going to click somewhere in the white area here and I'm going to type out um, I'm going to do this all caps windmill room A so this is the agenda for windmill room A now it's white that's not a very high contrast is it so if I grab my type tool and select it and up at the top here I go and change it to black. I always grab my move tool after. You'll see me come over and do that a lot. It will change it to black. Now if I want to make this larger, once again, using my move tool, I can click on one edge, but look, that looks bad, doesn't it? If you hold the shift key down, it will constrain. Now I'm not going to put any drop shadows or things I don't think on this. We want to make it very readable. So windmill room A. I can put it on center here. I don't know. Nah, I think I'll stick over here on the left. So this is what would be on the outside of the door, like on a screen. So I'll grab my type tool again. It'll pick up same type. And I'm going to click. And I'm going to put, we're going to start our stuff at 9 a.m. Now, there is a tab key in here, but it doesn't align. So I'm just going to put a couple spaces, two spaces. Um, I'll put like conference introductions. And then let's say 10 a.m. And I'm making this up. And we'll say um, maybe home AV installs. So these these would be the um, oh the program that's going on in this room. So uh, 11:30. There's um, I don't know um, new AV tech. And then let's say 1.30, because there's probably a lunch. 1.30 p.m. Um, installing uh, out, outside. And let's say there's one at 3 o'clock. Once again, I'm making this up, so make it up on your own, uh, whatever you can think of. Um, 3 p.m. is um, keynote speaker, and then let's say 5 p.m. Uh, dinner. So that's what's going on in this room. My only thing I don't like is the alignment issues here. I guess I could use a space key, and that's going against everything I would teach you in typography, but I'm kind of stuck here. That is not aligned because the tab key does not align. You could see if I get rid of all these and just do a tab, eh, maybe we will. Hold on. 
Let's try it. So I'm using my selection tool. Yeah, see we're off just a little bit on these. See that one's off too. So I am gonna stick with just a couple spaces for now. Most of my design, including myself, I would yell at you about doing this, but we're keeping it simple. Um, it works. And I'm gonna just do conference intro as well. That's a little long, because I wanna bring a picture in too. So we have our text here. I can position it, that looks good. I'm gonna indent it just a little bit. Spacing looks good, but if I select my type tool and I come over and click on character, C-H-A, there is letting. So letting is the amount of space between this uh, line of type and this line of type. 80 pixels is the size of the font, so it's 80 points. If I wanna have a little bit more space, I need to make this like 100 and 10 pixels and you can see it opens up or maybe 105 now one little problem I have here is it's still not all that great on the contrast it's a little tough to read so I'm gonna click on the white background change the opacity to about 75 and that does make a difference. And in my old one, I used a different font, but look, I went, it's about the same. Different font, but you can tell I kind of had the same exact layout. You know, with this one, I could add a drop shadow. So I go to the effect, go to drop shadow. What do you think? Yeah, it's just a little something. And we now have a template we can use over and over for the other rooms, room B, room C, et cetera, et cetera. So if I do a file, save as PSD, it will download the PSD file to your computer. And you can reopen this using this program by going file, open. So if I close this, I'll close both of them, and I do a file open and go to my documents, Oh, sorry, downloads. <laughs> There's my file. And it's reopened. So the last thing we're gonna do is bring an image in. So the way we do that is we do a file, open in place. So it's a little different than Photoshop. It needs to open it and place it. And so I have an image of a cable on my desktop. Any picture will work. So, you know, it's AV, so we're gonna use it. I know it's kind of a little goofy picture, but when you bring it in, Look what happens. It's there, you can see it, the outline, but it put it at the bottom. So if I drag it up, I can click and drag on that layer, there's my cable. If I hold the shift key down, I can scale it. I'm using the move tool here. I'll double click on it. I'm gonna put it right over here. And now, layer effects. Let's do a stroke, a little too big, huh? So let's bring down the size, about there. And let's do a drop shadow. Now I picked up the same drop shadow that I use everywhere else, which is good. I'll hit okay. And we got ourselves a little picture to go with it. So this isn't high-end design, but it's simple and it works. Uh, my only my only thing I don't like is that there is no true tab in here, so I can't line things up nice like right here, and that would bug me. I would probably sit down and figure out a way to do it. But for most people, this is going to give them a template that you can just now come in and make it room B. Whoops. I don't crash or anything first. Oh, shift B. So I'm going to undo that, <laughs> and I can change the times and then save it. So we want to, first of all, save as a PSD. Now you've got this file. But now I want to save it into a format I can use. So it's either going to be a PNG file, a ping file, or a JPEG file, or there might be another file format with whatever system you're working with. But we're going to save this as a PNG. And so I can do an export as. You can see here he makes a PDF. There's TIFFs. There's an ICO, which is an icon file, bitmapped. 
but you're probably going to use one of these two. And for what we're doing, the PNG is probably the better choice. So I'm going to click PNG. It'll open it up. So this is the file that's going to be output that I can put into another program. This would work in PowerPoint as well. So you can take this and dump it into PowerPoint. Um, this is just a nice universal formatting. You can throw it on the web. Yeah, most systems are going to take it as well. You'll see here, format, everything's here. Leave the quality 100. It makes it a 2.2 megabyte file. So it's a small file. I'm going to hit save and it will download it to your sorry, your downloads. So for my class, you'll be turning that file in uh, and there's instructions in there. If for everyone else, it's the file format you're probably going to want to use, uh, but it's a very simple uh, layout. It's a template you can use. You can play with it, be creative. Uh, this really isn't a design outline. This was just to use the program to build something. And you can see not too many layers either. So once again, a simple AV uh, walkthrough. We got the right file size and now we have the right format to put into another program. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions, you can always contact me through uh, YouTube, everywhere else. Um, you can find me easily, Sean Glumis. And um, thanks again for watching.